Hey guys, this video is going to talk about similar figures and scale factors. All right, so to relate this to kind of a real, real world career, um, think about if you were a graphic artist or a graphic designer and you have this picture of a deer already made up for a deer crossing sign, but you need to enlarge it. So how do you know how long the new sides have to be in your picture or the antlers in your, in your deer? How do you know how long the sides need to be if I want it to be similar to my original picture. Same thing here, maybe you want to enlarge this or shrink it. If you're a video game designer, maybe you need your character to get bigger or smaller and you still want them to stay proportional. So that's what this lesson is going to go over. We're going to learn how to use scale factors, scale factors to help us find out how long things need to be in similar figures. This also relates to dilations, which we've been doing in math because we're enlarging and shrinking. All right, so we've talked about similar figures in the past. Similar figures are two figures that have the same shape, but they can be different sizes. So maybe I have this triangle, and then maybe I, maybe I enlarge it, draw the same shape triangle, it's just a little bit bigger. Okay, the simple for similar figures is this little, kind of like a squiggly line. So some important things that you need to know about similar figures are their angles are always equal. So the angles in similar figures are equal. All right, another thing that you need to know are that the sides, if I take corresponding sides or the sides that match up, they are proportional. So the sides are proportional. What that can mean is that they have a scale factor and you use that same scale factor on every side. So if this side was two, I might say, well, this one's gonna be three times bigger, so this side is six. Okay, so if the bottom of this triangle is 4, if I made it 3 times bigger, it might be 12 then. Okay, so the sides have to be proportional and the angles have to be equal, the corresponding angles. So today we're going to talk about how you can use a scale factor to find the missing side of similar figures. Alright, the first definition that you need to know is actually what is a scale factor? So basically, a scale factor is what the sides of the original shape are multiplied by. That's important, that multiplied by. So what the sides of the original shape are multiplied by to get the new shape. Okay, and a quick, easy way to find scale factor is use this fraction. You always take um, the new side over the original. That'll give you the scale factor. Okay, so let's just take a look at this side and this side. These are similar figures, and... These are the two corresponding sides, the sides that match up. And I want to know, well, what did I have to multiply my original one? Okay, so what did I multiply? Six times something, and I got to three. So I need to figure out what that is. Six times what is three? Well, you might think six times one, well, that's six. Six times two is 12. So it's got to be a smaller number. So the way to find out what that number is right here is you can just take the new side, which is 3, and put it over the original side, which is 6. So 3 over 6, that simplifies to 1 half, right? So now if I try to work that out, let's see if this is true, if I try to solve that. So 6 times 1 half, let's see if that is 3. Well, I'll put a 1 under here. I'll go across the top. 6 times 1 is 6. 1 times 2 is 2. And then 6 divided by 2 is 3. So the scale factor is 1 half, or 3 over 6. Okay, now I'm going to look at another side to see if that actually worked. Okay, so I'm going to do 12. That was this side. I want to know what was the scale factor that got me to 6. It always has to be what you multiply by. So 12 times something got me to 6. So I thought the scale factor was a half. Let's see if that's true. So 12 times a half, does that equal 6? Well, you can put a 1 under there. 12 times 1 is 12. 1 times 2 is 2. And then 12 divided by 2 is 6. So that did work. So that is a scale factor. Okay, so I have two video game characters here, and I want to know, well, what's my scale factor to get from my original one to my new one, my image? Um, now, first thing I might notice is that this is an enlargement, right? It got bigger, okay? But I want the sides to stay proportional. I want it to, you know, if, as it gets taller, I also want it to get wider. So I want to know what's my scale factor. So a quick, easy way to do it is you take the image length, so I'll take 15, and you put that over the original length, which was five. Remember, it says here's the new and the original. So 15 over five, that actually ends up being three, 
So my scale factor is 3. Now remember, scale factor means what are you multiplying by? Well, let's see if that works. 5 times 3, is that 15? Yep, it is. So that is my scale factor for this shape. Okay, I want you to put, pause the video and I want you to try these two. What do you think the scale factors are for both of these problems? Write down your answers, um, push pause, and then push play when you're ready to see the solution. All right, so the first one, remember to find a scale factor, you take the new length, which was five, over the original length, which was four. So my scale factor here is five fourths. And then I just want to show you how to prove it. Remember, it's how do you get from the original to the new one by multiplying. So let's see if that works. Four times my scale factor, I said was five fourths. Does that get me to that new side of five? Okay, well, I'll put a one under here and I'll do four times five, which is 20, over one times four, which is four. 20 divided by four is five. Okay, let's look at the second one. Okay, I'm just gonna kinda whoop, move this over. So I wanna know what's my scale factor. So remember, scale factor is the new side. So six, it matches up with 10. So I wanna know 10 times what gave me six? 10 times something is six. Well, I know it's gonna have to be a small number. So you take your new side, which was six, over your original, which is 10. And then I always try to simplify it. I can divide both of these by two. So I end up with three fifths. Okay, so I'm gonna come put that over here, three fifths. And let's see if that actually works. I'll put a one under there. So I'll do um, 10 times three, which is 30, over one times five, which is five. 30 divided by five is six, which I wanted it to be. So my scale factor on this second problem is three fifths. All right, please take a second to try this problem out. What do you think the scale factor is for these triangles? How did I get from the original to the new one? All right, so some people, let's go ahead and I'm just gonna pick two sides. I'll see if I did the same one as you. So I have six corresponds to 21. So for a scale factor, you take the new one, which is 21, over the original, which is six. Now, what if I would have picked different sides? What if I would have taken 28 and eight? So I took my new one over my original, 28 over eight. Or what if I would have picked the other side, which was 14 and four correspond, 14 over four. Now, all of these scale factors look different, but are they the same? Well, if you're not sure if they're the same, let's try simplifying all three of them and see what we get. So 21 over six, I could divide these both by three and I end up with seven over two. So that's my scale factor. 28 over eight, let's divide by four. I end up with seven over two, which is equal to that one. 14 over four, let's divide by two. I end up with seven over two. Again, all of these scale factors, even though they looked a little bit different to start with, they're actually all equal. So the scale factor to get from my original triangle to my new one is seven halves. So I have to times by seven halves which is actually the same as three and a half. So six times three and a half or seven halves would give me 21. Same thing here, eight times three and a half is 28. So all the sides, that is my scale factor. Okay, so when you're working with scale factors, if you're going from a smaller shape to a bigger one, if it's an enlargement, the scale factor, what you multiply, has to be greater than one. So the scale factor is greater or bigger than one. So an example of that would be times two, times seven, times um, seven over two, because that's bigger than one. So if you're going from small to big, the scale factor should be greater than one. If you're going from a larger shape to a smaller shape, so if you're going from a large one and you're shrinking it down to a smaller one, the scale factor should be less than one. So an example of that might be times a third. That's really the same as dividing by three or times a fourth. Okay, so the scale factor has to be a fraction smaller than one. Please put these in your notes. All right, so now we are going to try to use what we just learned about scale factors to find missing sides in similar figures. So I'm gonna tell you that these two triangles are similar. All right, I'm also going to tell you that the scale factor is 5 fourths. I already found that for you. So the scale factor is 5 fourths. So I wanna know if I can find this missing side length, x. Okay, and I'm gonna to try to use the scale factor. So I figured out to get from this triangle G to triangle H, the scale factor is 5 fourths. That's what I'm timesing by. So to find X, I can just do six times my scale factor, 5 fourths, because I'm going from this one to this one. 
Okay, I'll put a 1 under the 6 and just multiply straight across. 6 times 5 is 30, and 1 times 4 is 4, and then um, I can type in on my calculator 30 divided by 4, which gives me 7.5. So this side right here is 7.5 inches. All right, now what if I want to try to find y? So if I want to kind of work backwards, now I want to go from this shape to this shape. So if I'm trying to find my scale factor this time, so now I think I'm kind of reversing it. My scale factor is here's my new one, 4 over 5, my original. So now I'm going to use 4 over 5, and I want to know 10 times what gives me y. So I'm going to do 10 times my scale factor, 4 over 5. It's going to give me y. I'll put a 1 under there, so I get 40 over 5, which is 8. So this side would be 8. All right, so we are going to try to find y in this example. So first thing that you always want to think about is you're trying to go from, we're trying to find y. So let's point our arrow towards the y. Okay, and I know it matches up with 9. So I'm trying to figure out 9 times something is y. Okay, when you're, first thing that you need to do is find your scale factor. So your scale factor you can go ahead and pick two sides that you do know that match up. So I see 11 and 33. And right now I'm going to say this is my new one, and this is my original, the small one. So I'm going to take my new one, 33, over my original, 11. 33 over 11 is 3. So that is my scale factor. It's times 3. From the small to the big, it's 3 times bigger. Okay, so if I want to try to find y now, okay, I'm starting at the 9. I want to know how do I get to the y? So I'm going to do 9 times, my scale factor is 3, 9 times 3 is 27. So my answer is 27 centimeters. Okay, let's look at this other picture and let's say I want to find x. So I'm just going to draw my arrow pointing to here to start with. Alright, so I'm going from small to big, so I'm going from here to here, so it's going to be times something, remember, it's always times something. All right, so first thing you need to find your scale factor. So again, this is my new one in this example, and this is my original. So I take, my, take two sides that you know. So I know my new one is 24, and that matches up with 9. So 24 over 9, that is my scale factor. Now, I can divide that out a little. Let's divide that by 3. 24 divided by 3 is 8. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So that's my scale factor. Okay, I'll just abbreviate that. Okay, so now I know it's times 8 thirds. That's my scale factor. So if I want to try to find x, okay, I want to go from 6 times my scale factor. That'll give me x. So 6 times 8 thirds should give me that missing side. I'll put a 1 under here. Um, 6 times 8 is 48, and 1 times 3 is 3. And now if I want to get specific, I'll do 48 divided by 3. And the answer is 16. So x ends up being 16 inches. All right, so in this video, you just, used, or you just found out a way that you can use scale factors to find missing sides in similar figures. Now, tomorrow, we're going to learn another way that you can solve for missing sides in similar figures using proportions. Okay, we, we kind of talked about that last year, but today, we just were going to talk about scale factors. If you have questions, please ask your teacher, and um, he or she can go over some examples with you.